yo, yo. All right, the light is pretty bright, but it's all good. So, you know, today, I just wanna real quickly go over some of these principles that are in this course by this guy, John Kehoe, who I've talked about before. So the first one is my mind, my thoughts are real forces. And contemplating this, you know, your thoughts really have, it's like a force, it's like an energy. So it's not too, uh, it's not too assumptive to think of it like that. It's not too much to think that, you know, if I, if I think this, it's gonna have put out a force into the universe. And so what we're talking about today is we've been talking about visualizing, we've been talking about feeling it as here and now, we've been talking about visualizing from the third person, so being able to see yourself, and not just visualizing, but also like being able to be in such a state of such relaxation that now you are having these visions come to you. You don't have to exert this prefrontal cortex energy to create this and, and, and be all tense in your body because you're able to just relax and just imagine yourself receiving like from a white light or a pink light or a gold light, whatever light makes you feel good and imagine you're just receiving. So the other, the next, the next thing he says in mind power, the next tenet of mind power is the mind is a sending and receiving station. And he talks about how we are consistently uh, black holes and white holes walking around. That's what Nassim Harriman talks about. And I apply it to this because it is like we are consistently receiving the energy that is the black hole and we are putting out the energy. We are, our thoughts that are, the forces of our thoughts are echoing out into the universe and creating and manifesting. So, you know, think about that. Imagine yourself just being like this well of energy and this energy is just cycling through you. It's like the toroidal field is like a donut and imagine it's just like swirling all around and you are just here, man. But you now, when you're aware of this, you're able to see that and just know that, hey, I can just focus on what it is that I'm creating. So I focus on the relationship. I focus on the new me that I'm becoming, the fashionable me, the one that steps out into, the, into wherever I'm going and people are like, man, he's always, there's something about him. Like, not only from your outer way that you dress, but the way that you carry yourself. There's something about her or him. Man, like who, who is that? I wanna to get to know them a little bit better. They have like this confidence about them, this, uh, this aura, this magnetic aura, which is essentially, it's like, it's self-love that's like perpetuating you just being at one and being harmonious with your current environment, your current reality, but at the same time having that that new version of yourself that you stepped into, the, the one that's higher, the one that you think, damn, like that person, that is the highest version of myself, or that's the version of myself that I'm conceptualizing, that I'm bringing into being right now. And when you walk around, when you walk around with this energy, you will just naturally, people will have, you, you'll start to give off that type of aura, and you don't even need to try to do it. That's something, it's not something that you try, it's something that you are. So now you're walking and you just naturally, because you your breath is, is flowing and you're not holding a bunch of tension within your body, you have ease now and you're able to easily feel the ease and comfort in your own skin and you show up like present, like really present. So your, your energy is present. People feel that and people are like, people are responsive to that because they see that you are awake. You're like a firefly, like they talk about in Tufti. You're, you've stepped out of the mannequin and you've stepped out into the film role and now you actually have an active presence in this. You're not just going by the script, which was your previous thoughts and emotions and feelings all muddled together that are, that are instantly manifesting themselves in your action, in your an anxious thoughts, in your anxiety, in your fears, in your concerns, in your hesitation to do whatever it is. Because now you have embodied this new higher version. You know, ancient Egyptians and people in ancient cultures, they would assume the role of being a god. They would see themselves and, and think about themselves. The kings, they would assume the role of a god and they would allow that type of energy to flow from them. We can do the same thing. We don't have to necessarily call it a god. We don't have to buy into any particular 
ideology that we want. We could we could just pick a figure or a charismatic person that we've seen, or if you could do a God as well, you could just do whatever it is that you want. You see somebody on TV, somebody that comes to mind, um, Harvey, Harvey Specter from the show Suits. This guy, he's just so freaking confident. Like everything that he says, he's so witty, he's so sharp, he's so on top of it. You, you imagine that you have these qualities, you see these qualities and you see yourself embodying the qualities that you wanna have. And then you are just, but at the same time, you're comfortable. You know that the thing is there's no, perfection doesn't exist. Even these characters in movies, they have a perfectly written script. They deliver the lines perfectly. It's still no such thing as perfection because that, that doesn't exist. So you're still, that's, that's part of it. The detachment of allowing yourself to make mistakes. You might say something that sounds dumb or you could, or you could conceive that it sounds dumb or you could just say, hey, it was just a figure of speech or hey, and just laugh at it and, and make it make it a funny, you know, more lighthearted thing that makes everybody else relaxed because no nobody's perfect. Everybody says things, everybody stumbles on their words, everybody has, you know, whatever, little little mistakes that you might make as you are communicating. You don't even have to call them mistakes, but they're just little like imperfections, you could say, of communication or of, of speaking or whatever. And you know that's just part of it. Like, just be okay, be natural with that. And that's what sets you apart. You're okay, you laugh at yourself. You go up, you say, you sound super nervous, and you just like, <laughs> yeah, like, I know that probably, I know it sounded probably, uh, I'm kind of nervous right now, my bad. Or you don't even have to say that, but you just you just assume that it is fine. Like, they, they know, they know how you're feeling. They know that, like, yeah, like I actually, I have never been to, you know, somewhere, I haven't been to an event like this before, or, you know, it doesn't matter what, depending on the situation, you just let them know that, look, it didn't phase me. I know that, you know, whatever, and you're just moving on. You're just on to the next. You're not letting anything consume you. So-called awkwardness, you just, you cut ties with that. You don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to buy into that. So. Let's say that a lot of people are, are looking at you and you feel a lot of social pressure. Imagine that there's like cords of energy that are, are coming from them to you or that are tying you now because their focus is on you. That's, that's essentially on an energetic level what's happening. You just cut, cut that shit, cut that shit off. Imagine you just wave your hands and you slice all the cords off. And that helps to get rid of the, the nervousness of you know, the expectations, what are people's expectations of me? Like you don't ha always have to fit into their narrow, cause you don't know what, they, you don't even know what their expectations might be. They might be something that, you know, you think people want you to be a certain way, but really in reality, if you showed up like this, which is what your intuition, what the source energy that's flowing through you wants you to do, then they would actually be more happy about that. Or if you were just more relaxed or more, more composed, but that composition, that relaxedness comes from being okay with it. Being okay with it, falling on your face. Talking to somebody new, and it's okay if you just fucking completely fuck up and say what you didn't mean to say or stumble on your words or stutter or whatever, it's okay. <laughs> and that gives you that natural ease that, that is just so attractive that everybody is attracted to. And we're talking about you know attraction in general, which doesn't have to be a romantic attraction. It can also just be like the, the attractive knit quality of a person that is, you know, attractive to the same sex or attractive just in general. It's there's an, a general attraction that occurs when somebody is very comfortable with themselves and when they're not afraid to put themselves out there. Because again, everybody knows. Look, we know we're not perfect. You see the other person come with the confidence of putting themselves out there, putting their best foot forward. Now you're saying, oh, this person is cool. This person doesn't have the fear, or even if they have the fear, they're not letting the fear control them. And that is inspiring. That is courageous. That is something that we look up to in others when we see that and we think, damn, I wanna have some of that. I wanna be like that. So that is what you do. And when you see yourself in, you, in these situations, you see yourself, you truly are seeing that version. That version, it could be a scene out of a movie. Imagine yourself, you know, use references, use whatever it takes for you to get into that mode where you were like, yeah, like I can see, I can see like exactly how this person would act in this situation. Or I can see exactly how now, like 
the way that you the way that you move, the way that you stand, the way that you walk. Walk like that new version of yourself. Walk like that version that you saw in a in a movie. You know, who's another character? You think of um, what's his name from Californication. He's smooth. Everything he does is smooth. The way he walks, he just could care less. But at the same time, it's not that he like uh, is a, a complete fucking asshole. He he still uh, has like a good heart. He's like a bad boy with a good heart or whatever. That that is so interesting and, uh, and intriguing for people because it's not like you're just this soft you know guy that says yes to everybody or like let's let's people walk all over you. It's like no, you have like this this hardness, this edge to you. But at the same time, you can be open, you can be uh, nice, and and you still do have a good heart somewhere in there. And that is attractive to people. It doesn't matter guy or girl, but being able to have a, a duality to you so that you're not just so one dimensional. You're, you're like a, a character that's come to life and people can't quite put you in a box. And that is attractive, that is enigmatic, that is mysterious, it's intriguing. And that will make you more and more like what it, what it is that you're seeking to be. And I can guarantee you that you know, whether you're trying to achieve more in your business, your job, your, your uh, <clears throat> relationships, whatever, uh, getting better at a skill, like these things are, these, you're, you're assuming, what we're talking about is assuming the air of the, and the aura of the confident person, of the confident version, of the version that is, you know, the version that has already done the thing, the version that has already done it, that's already made that move that you're trying to make. So therefore you are instilled with this core confidence, this core belief, core trust in yourself. And that's gonna come through and that is going to achieve, help you on the path towards achieving what, what it is that you desire. I personally gave another example earlier about being a creative director. So going off that, one more, one more exercise that we could do is like, so imagine that, you know, you are, you know what's interesting? So I was I was I was saying this earlier about the having a cool camera strap and like cool gear for your for your shit. And I have my camera right over there, but I actually just ordered this off-white camera strap. I was gonna order a supreme one and the off-white one looked cool. And so I ordered that shit. And so it's like even me speaking about it, I'm manifesting that now. And now when I go when I go up, instead of having like this kind of whack little camera strap that I have, actually I'll show you guys real quick. So this is right here is my Contax G2, which is, it's not cheap, but it's a vintage camera and it's, it's very nice. And the thing is I put this little Canon strap on it just because I didn't have anything else at the time, but this is not a good look. It's like too short. And so I ordered a, like a full around the body strap that's gonna be off white and it's gonna look fucking sick. And so that's part of it, man. Like who, 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 who are the type of people that put attention to detail in the small things. It's the person that cares. It's the person that you know is gonna show up and they're gonna be like, if, if this person, and this isn't necessarily true all the time, but you can bet that if, if people put uh, care into the details, into the small things, that they're gonna do, put the care into the photo photography that they're doing, into the shoot. If they're dressed like very, in a certain way and it's, it's very particularly crafted, you can tell that they have their own style and their own you know, thing that they like that they're doing, that lets you know right there, this person is manifesting their own style, their own persona, their own dynamic energy is flowing through, through the choices that they're making, the small choices that they're making. And this is gonna also show up in their fucking photography, in their fucking art that they create. It's going to fucking be there. It's, it can't not be there because it's like a part of them. It's like, when you see somebody and this is, a, this is an ancient thing, I think, that was in Greek. But a word for the mind in Greek also meant that person's physical state. And they would say they, they were of sound mind if they had like a nice house and nice things and organization in their house and, you know, refinement and, and what have you. Like, it was, it was something that was like, it was, it was connected. It wasn't like this separate thing, like being a, of sound mind and then having like the exterior external manifestation. It was like, this was this one and the same, which I found to be very interesting because I think on some level it is one and the same. If you do have a sound mind, if you are organized up here in your thoughts and you are able to execute and exact and bring into life what, what it is that you're thinking about, then your external world is going to be a reflection of that and it's going to show up there. Anyways, 
Thank you guys for watching. And if this has been helpful, drop a like, drop a comment. Um, and yeah, let me know if there's any anything in particular that you guys want to talk about. I think what I what I might cover is some more in-depth stuff on Toothy, since I know that that was that was popular and people enjoyed that. The take on the plate, I could go into more detail with it, but hopefully this guys this helped you guys, and I will see you guys next time.